Welcome back to Binge Finance. We talk about growth stocks which have pulled back. Stay up to date with our content by subscribing and turning on notifications. Okay, let's have a look at Viacom, ticker symbol VIAC. The stock fell considerably from around about $100 all the way down. It's currently at 41.74, so it's more than 50 55% drop. In fact, the chart looks very similar to stock TIRX, which we looked at a few days ago. So in this video, I want to look at why Viacom dropped, talk about what the company is and what they do, and then we can try and analyze if it could be a good purchase. Remember, I'm just a YouTuber. I could easily miss something important, so do your own due diligence. And remember, stocks that have pulled back can continue to go down. Viacom, or Viacom CBS as they're now called, is a multinational mass media conglomerate. They partnered with CBS Corporation back in 2019. That's why they're called Viacom CBS now. And they are in fact one of the world's leading producers of premium entertainment. Think Netflix, Disney Plus, that kind of thing. Although there's a lot of people that think it's going to be very hard for them to move to streaming and compete with Netflix and Disney even though it's the right choice for them. They certainly have the programs. I mean, have a look here. You can see all these uh, big name programs that we're all very familiar with. You're bound to recognize quite a few of them. So I just want to start by reading an article here on Variety.com that asks why the stock has fallen 55% in one week. Uh, they say it's been a breathtaking week for Viacom CBS. Shares of the media conglomerate slipped another 6.7% in regular trading Monday and the company's market value is now has now been chopped in half. The company is being beset by a confluence of factors that have crashed its stock price after a huge run up at the start of the year. Now that's something important to note. Uh, you know, s uh, some of the pullback is because they ran up so much. The stock price slumped 23% last Wednesday after they announced a 3 billion stock sale. Now I'm just going to explain this for a second. This is the point here where they offered or they announced they're going to be offering a 3 billion stock sale. Now they announced the pricing of 20 million shares of its class B common stock at $85 per share and 10 million shares of its series A mandatory convertible preferred stock at $100 a share. I'll tell you what that means in a minute, but I just want to make the point that the money they're raising is due to be used, or they say it's going to be used uh, in investments in streaming and other general corporate purposes. Now, a company can raise money to grow their business in two or three ways. One, they can just borrow the money. There's some tax advantages when a company borrows debt, but obviously that money has to be paid back. Another way is to sell shares, which it's good that you don't have to pay anything back, but then you're diluting your stock. And then the third way is this convertible preferred stock. And all that means is it's sort of like a middle middle ground. You're issuing stock, but that stock doesn't get converted into shares until a specific time. And this is what the market didn't like, the fact that they're going to be diluting to that extent. Um, OK, so we had that shock to the market then pretty much straight away on friday investment firm i don't know how to say that archigos capital management was forced by its banks to sell more than 20 billion worth of shares after some positions moved against the firm so the uh, i'm guessing the sudden drop in price forced this capital management to liquidate a load of their shares which just pushed the price down even further and so the shares closed at $45.01 Monday. That's down from $100, just over $100. That's just a very quick and sudden drop in price just because of these two or three catalysts that came one after the other. So as of now, the price to earnings ratio was 23.4 times and now it's just 10.8. So it could represent a good value. However, uh, the cratering of the stock could threatened to derail its 3 billion plus stock sales because now the price has just <laughs> been cut in half. We don't know what's going to happen with that uh, that plan to issue $3 billion worth of stock. A uh, comment here says, we think the liquidation trade could pose a lingering near-term overhang on the shares, potentially compromising, if not jeopardizing, the pending equity offerings. Uh, however, they do say we see a gradual reversion to some st stabilization in the fundamentals while the company increasingly pivots to its direct-to-consumer offerings. Now, 
about this direct to consumer offerings um, there's an article here wall street expresses doubt about the streaming execution bank of america expressed concerns about the ability to execute especially against large players like netflix and disney uh, they say the company launched its paramount plus streaming service earlier this month media companies have been pouring funds into new content as the field gets more crowded and the new funds from the stock sale could help paramount plus from peers that's if the stock sale goes ahead but the analysts warned that it will be hard pressed to compete with large scaled streaming players like netflix and disney um, perhaps the issue here is that netflix everything's in-house whereas perhaps Viacom have more licensing deals, especially with like sport. They're going to have less control and also have to pay more of their income to the licensees. Now I'm just over on Simply Wall Street here and they have said that it's trading at 38.2% below their estimate of fair value. Um, but the debt to equity ratio is 121.3%, which is considered high. Now I wonder if this 3 billion stock sale is potentially you know to try and get their debt under control but you know the variety make the point that even with this drop their market cap is still up from December the 1st December the 31st 2020 up from 23 billion now it sits around 43.4 billion so they've grown considerably in the last year and they've got a lot of customers so at the end of 2020 Viacom CBS tallied some 29 million subscribers for its streaming platform worldwide and has told investors it is targeting 65 to 75 million by 2024. Uh, to put that in perspective Netflix have a little over 200 million so last year Viacom CBS spent about 15 billion dollars uh, company-wide on content including sports rights by 2024 the media conglomerate expects to spend around 5 billion on streaming content some of which will include the cost content for both linear TV and streaming platforms so you can see why Netflix is a much more streamlined business they're not trying to do two things but the platform was developed specifically for streaming they've got no pivoting to do it's, it's probably very difficult to compete but they do have a ton of amazing programs um, the media and entertainment company portfolio includes CBS, Showtime, Paramount Pictures, Nickelodeon, MTV, Comedy Central, BET, Paramount Plus and Pluto TV. So they definitely have a lot to offer their customers. In terms of revenue, in 2019 they made a total of $26.9 billion uh, and this year, it's, oh, sorry, 2020 is $25.28 billion. Um, that's obviously the pandemic and you can see here actually theatres uh, were down considerably which is you know understandable with the pandemic and something that's very impressive here they've got the Q4 global highlights global streaming and digital video revenue increased 71% year over year to 888 million driven by 74% growth in streaming subscription revenue and 69% streaming advertising revenue growth so this quarter compared to last quarter is a lot better up 74 and 69 percent which is very impressive and also their subscribers rose to nearly 30 million up 56 percent year over year so there it is if you think this company can compete and make the move to direct streaming then this could be a, a good time to get in so the concerns would be uh, the high levels of debt and the fact that that liquidation trade uh, could potentially cause a problem and maybe jeopardize the equity offerings which they were going to invest into streaming content and you know try and accelerate their move to direct to consumer streaming let me know in the comments what you think about this stock if you're going to be buying and i'll see you in the next one